Hi, my dear, dear nursing student friends. I am Lin. I'm the registered nurse that has almost three years experience on med surge telly floor. Today, we are going to talk about myasthenia gravis and guillain barre syndrome. The hospital that I work at has a neural floor. So when I flow to the neural floor, I could see some patients with those disease. However, I was the travel nurse before at a rehab facility where I saw a lot of patients with those illnesses. And I'm sure those two topics are going to be on your neural exam. So let's practice. Question number one, a nurse instructs a patient who has myasthenia gravis about home care and the risk factors that can exacerbate the disease. Which of the following patient statements or statements indicate a need for further teaching? A. I have suction equipment at home in case I start to choke. B. I should take my pyridoxine, also called mastinon, after my meal times for a better absorption. C. I should soak in a warm bubble bath every day to relax myself. Or D. I will take a bigger meal during the day and a smaller meal in the evening. F. I wear a medical identification bracelet at all times. The answers are B and C. The medication mastinom should always given an interval throughout the day when maximum strength is needed. Uh, for example, on rising and before meal times, so the patients have the strength to chew their food. And option C here is also a right answer. Here, option C says the patient will soak in warm bubble bath. Hot temperatures and hot weather can cause a patient who has MG to have an exacerbation. Other exacerbation factors including non-compliance with medication, infections, and other psychological stressors. Okay, next question. Which response to the Tessalon, also called angiophonia chlorine injection, indicates the client has myothenia gravis? A. There is reduced amplitude of electrical stimulation in the muscle. B. The patient has no apparent change in the assessment data. C. The patient shows a marked improvement of chewing and breathing strength. Or D. The patient's slurred speech and droopy eyelids and tiredness of the arms or legs will be improved in the next five hours. I know you can get it right. The answer is option C. The patient shows a marked improvement of chewing and breathing strength. The patient with MG always shows a significant improvement of muscle strength that lasts about 5 to 10 minutes after Tessalon injection. So that is why option D is wrong, because it states the opposite from option C. The results of a Tessalon test can be evaluated by a brief observation of the effectiveness of the medication after the injection. And the effectiveness of Tessalon only lasts for about 5 to 10 minutes. And the option A is wrong. It should increase the amplitude of electrical stimulation in the muscle instead of reduce. Okay, next question. A nurse is caring for a patient who has myosthenia gravis and has developed ptosis and diplopia. Which of the following actions should be the nurse take? Select all the apply. A. Assist the patient to go to the bathroom. B. Encourage use sunglasses. C. Tape eyes closed at night. Or D. Provide for periods of rest during the day. Or E. Apply lubricating eye drops. Or F. Support the head with pillows.
The insoles are A, C, and E. First, we need to know what a ptosis and diplopia are. A ptosis is drooping eyelid, and the diplopia is double vision. So option A is correct because the patient's eye vision is not the best. At the hospital, in this kind of new environment, patient is very, very easy to fall. So give the patients a hand is always a good option. And option C and option E are also correct because taping eyelid at night and apply lubricants for the eyes can prevent cornea dryness and irritation. Option B is wrong because the patient with MG are not photophobia. Sunglasses will not help them. Option F does not help with drooping eyes or double vision. Okay, next question. A patient goes to the ER and tells the triage nurse that he has MG. And the last two days, he coughs frequently while eating and drinking and is experiencing needing to take a breath after every few words. Which of the following is a priority action? A. Prepare for intubation. B. Close monitor for intake and output. C. Administer activant, the patient may be just too anxious. Or D, immediately stop home anticholic nasterase medications. My nursing student friends, please say you choose option A. First of all, the patient has myothenia gravis history and according to the patient's description, in the last two days, he coughs more frequently uh, while eating or drinking and is experiencing needing to take a breath after every uh, few words. This patient is experiencing an MG crisis. He is at a great risk for respiratory failure due to dysphagia and extremely muscle weakness. All priority actions should be focused on respiratory assessment and support. Option B, monitoring intake and output is important but this is not the priority. The patient may be anxiety and there is nothing wrong with it. However, you should never administer Ativan or other sedating medication because by doing that, you will only worsen the patient's symptom. Option D is wrong because during the MG crisis, anticholinesterose medication should be given. Okay, next question. The nurse is discharging a patient diagnosis with myosinia gravis, and the patient's spouse is also at the bedside. Which statement by the patient or the spouse indicate an understanding of the discharge instructions? Select all the apply. A. The patient must take a holiday from the medications every four or five weeks. B. Since steroid is not going to work for my disease, I am not going to worry about it. C. I must take my medications on time every day or I could have problems. D. I will take my medications until my MG got cured. F. If all those medications don't help me with my MG symptoms, I might need to discuss with my doctor about thymatomy. Option A says the patient must take a holiday from the medications every four or five weeks. These patients can't stop the medication abruptly, especially peridomstigmine and the steroid have to be tapered down gradually. Option B is wrong. Corticosteroids, especially prednisone, do help for patients with MG. Option C is right. The anticholinesterase medications used to treat MG must be taken on time in order to prevent muscle weakness and respiratory uh, complications. The medications are usually taken 30 to 16 minutes before meals, doing so making the drug have maximum effect. 
So this is easy for the patient to chew, to swallow, and do not choke. Option D is wrong. There is no cure for myosthenia gravis, but the symptoms can gradually be controlled. Myosthenia gravis is a lifelong medication condition. Option F is right. Removal of the thymus gland results in improvement in majority of patients. Okay, next question. This question is quite similar to last one. The patient diagnosis with MG is being discharged home and the patient's spouse is also at the bedside. Which patient statements suggest that the patient or the spouse need further teaching? Select all the apply. A. Eating a large, well-balanced meal at the head of the bed below 30 degrees. B. Taking a long, hot shower to relax myself so I can fall asleep easily. Option C. Assist the patient during exercises and when performing activities of daily life. Option D. Discuss how to perform the handlick maneuver. Option E. Doing all chores early in the day while less fatigue. The answers are A, B, and E. Option A is the right answer. Overeating is the cause of exacerbation of symptoms. Also, we need to elevate the head of the bed to at least a semi fellows position when the patient is eating. That way to prevent food aspirate into the lungs. Option B is also the right answer. Uh, hot temperature are also a cause of exacerbation of symptoms. And option C is the wrong answer. To encourage the patient to perform muscle strengthening exercises and permit dignity by allowing the patients to, to perform their ADLs while maintenance safety. D is the wrong answer. The patient is at risk for choking and knowing specific matter to help decrease the patient and the spouse anxiety and promotes confidence or managing potential complications. Option E is the right answer. Patients with MG are taught to space out activities over the day to conserve energies and restore muscle strength. And here there is an absolute word all. Oh, in English word, we don't like those absolute words. Okay, next question. The nurse differentiates between the clinical manifestations of guillain barre syndrome, GBS, that are related to autonomic nerve system dysfunction and those that are related to cranial nerve involvement. What does the nurse identify as a clinical manifestation that is related to autonomic nerve system? A. Dysphagia B. Tachycardia C. Facial flushing D. Facial weakness. The answer is C. Facial flushing is a manifestation of guillain barre syndrome that results from autonomic nerve system dysfunction. Dysphagia occurs due to cranial nerve involvement. Autonomic system dysfunction causes bradycardia rather than tachycardia in patients with GBS. Facial weakness is a result of cranial nerve involvement. Okay, next question. When caring for a patient who has guillain barre syndrome, which assessment data obtained by the nurse will require the most immediately action? A. The patient complains of tingling pain in the foot. B. The patient has continuously drooling of saliva. C. The patient's blood pressure is 110 over 60 and respiratory rate is 19. Or D. The patient's arms and legs reflex are absent.
Julie indicates decreased ability to swallow and the narrowing of the throat, which places the patient at risk for aspiration and requires repeat nursing and cooperation action, such as suctioning and possible intubation. The foot pain should be treated with uh, appropriate anesthesis and the blood pressure require ongoing monitor. And the blood pressure as well as the respiratory rate are not that bad. But those actions are not as urgently needed as maintain of respiratory function. Absence of the reflex should be documented. But this is a normal finding in Guillain Barre syndrome. Alright, next question. A female patient is admitted to the hospital with a diagnosis of Guillain Barre syndrome. The nurse inquires during the nursing admission interview if the patient has a history of a head injury or trauma to the spinal cord, b seizures or trauma to the brain, c respiratory or gastrointestinal infection during previous month, or d meningitis during the last two years. The answer is option C. Guillain Barre syndrome is a clinical symptom of unknown organs that involve with uh, cranial and peripheral nerve. Many patients report a history of respiratory or gastrointestinal infection in into one to four weeks before the onset of neurological deficits. Occasionally, the symptoms can be triggered by vaccination or surgery. Alright guys, and that is it for this video. And remember, I have more neuro videos and my channel. Please check those video out and good luck for your next neuro exam. I will see you next time. Bye.